Hello gamers, welcome to another edition of tonight on Main Chambers Game Table. For tonight, I am continuing my series exploring the Tiny D6 line of games, uh, this time up leading to Tiny Cthulhu by Alan Barr, published by Gallon Knight Games. Uh, it is that time of year, October, and that I start really thinking about, you know, cosmic horror and playing games like cosmic horror and pretty much having a good time being a little afraid now and then. So I've decided this year it's going to be Tiny Cthulhu. I know I have some dice here. These I thought about using my really cool Lovecraft dice, but I wasn't sure how well they'd show up on camera. So I decided to just go with the dice I've been using there um, just so people don't get confused and can see the results and so forth. So uh, that's why I switched up dice from my other, uh, from my session zero. Okay, so this is my Tiny Cthulhu campaign featuring Phineas Abercrombie. He is an investigator and a professor. Archibald Sneed. He is a veteran of wars and um, is generally kind of an unhappy person, but he uh, pretty much respects uh, Dr. Phineas. So follows him about. This is Clark Chandler. He is uh, an investigator, but also a private investigator. He was a police detective for a while, but decided to go solo. And this is Felicity Farrow, and she is a mystic and a tarot card reader who happens to be involved with Clark. Now, they uh, have all come together in the past, united by a uh, curiosity about some of the things that have been going on in their town. And so they have decided that they are going to investigate these things and make sure that those things uh, do not spill over into the world and try to stop them from happening and also to try to understand them because that's part of what's going on is they don't really understand them. Uh, Dr. Phineas has devoted his life to studying history and anthropology, and uh, he has come into information that not everybody in the world should have as far as the ancient races and so forth that existed before all of us, before all of current civilizations. So, recently, um, Dr. Phineas's uncle died, and they attended a funeral there. Uh, before the funeral, he had heard that there were some um, odds going on in the cemetery, the dead rising and so forth, and he didn't necessarily believe it. But when it came to uh, his uncle's funeral, they saw that some of the graves that looked like they had, should have been very old had been turned over and uh, had fresh dirt on them. So he was curious as to what was going on there. He talked to the grave diggers, but they were not talking uh, so they had the funeral for his uncle. The grave diggers filled in the hole, went upon their way, and Dr. Phineas and his team are sitting here just kind of thinking and wondering and pondering about the uncle, plus kind of investigating the cemetery to see if there's anything going on. So uh, the funeral has just broken up. Uh, the, pre the priest and the other uh, attendees have left the gates of the cemetery. And... Um, the uh, grave diggers had just finished filling in the hole and they headed off to their shack where they live on the land here. This is the 1920s, 1928. So um, they're sitting here reminiscing, having a moment of silence. And Dr. Phineas says, well, it looks like uh, this would be a good opportunity to kind of look around and see if we can find out what's been going on in these cemeteries, see if the rumors of of the dead walking or being expelled from the earth are true. Yeah, I'm all for that, says Archibald Sneed. Yeah, I've, I've been hearing this stories too in the bars about stuff like that. Yes, well, I say we go about and start looking. So just as they are about to go, uh, they make, the, they start, they kind of spread out a little bit, looking around. Uh, well, actually, they stay in pairs. So Dr. Phineas and uh, Archibald go together, and uh, Clark and Felicity stick together. Um, I 
All right, so uh, <clears throat> they're exploring the cemetery. And then uh, suddenly up from the ground, poof, explosions underneath these graves happen and these corpses flop up onto the earth. And they all, they have to, all through this area, so they have to make save tests or, or not, or they lose their feet. So Dr. Abercrombie falls, um, Sneed, he falls, and Clark, he keeps his feet, and Felicity, she keeps her feet as well. So I, I suppose the explosion was more, the explosion of gas from underneath the earth was more over here than it was uh, over here by them. And so I'm like, whoa, what was that? And uh, up from the ground um, comes a, uh, comes a humanoid like figure. And uh, he is uh, running. Uh, um, he like he pulls himself up out of the ground and starts is a bit startled that he sees anybody that is there and he jumps he, he, he follows one of the corpses up from beneath the ground and he pulls himself up out of a hole and he's like Argh. I did not know anyone was here. <sighs> and he starts to take off. And um, <clears throat> Clark is like, stop, halt. And he pulls out his pistol from inside of his jacket um, and fires a warning shot. And the ghoul stops and turns. And then we're going to roll initiative. So in Tiny D6 games, you roll initiative, and um, in combat, anybody that gets a test goes before the enemy, and anybody that um, fails goes after, and it looks like everybody got a success. So we'll track the initiative over here. So it looks like everybody is going to go before the ghoul. And so, um, also rules is written, it's cyclical, so if they, you know, whoever wins, they whatever order they go in, they go in before. But I like to roll. I like to roll initiative every, every round. Um, Clark is like, move, and I'll shoot you again, or I'll shoot you. We have questions. You horror! Now these everybody that sees the, um, so these two are going to stand up. That's going to be their actions. And everybody that sees the ghoul has to make a corruption test. So basically, um, let's see. Sound mind. Only one person has sound mind, which gives them... Uh, that is Dr. Phineas Abercrombie. He has sound mind, so he gets advantage on this test. And he fails. Um, so he can spend a corruption point to avoid uh, having to be temporarily shaken. My house, see, it, the uh, Tiny Cthulhu rules say that if you fail a roll and you don't spend a correction point, you are, you're out of commission for like one to six days. That doesn't quite fit in. I'm not playing quite pulp, but I also feel like you should be able to stay in, you know, in, in the game. So my house rule is if they fail that they can either spend a corruption point or they can be what I call rattled, uh, for, or shaken, depending whichever <laughs> word comes out of my mouth. I guess rattled works. Uh, they are rattled for one to three hours, which gives them disadvantage on all tests. So he has failed, but he's going to spend a corruption point instead to avoid being rattled. Um, now, the rest of them have to make uh, tests. So Archibald, he fails. So once again, he's going to spend a corruption point. He doesn't have many to begin with. Because um, he doesn't... He like, you know... Uh, Clark fails. Wow, man. So Clark also is going to spend a corruption point. And then uh, let's see if Felicity can handle this. She can, so she does not have to spend a corruption point. But the rest of them spend corruption points uh, for having come face to face with some kind of 
horrific underground dwelling flesh eating monster. And so uh, that was um, Clark's action was to talk to the ghoul and he's going to move a little closer. And then we move on to um, Dr. Abercrombie. And he's like, what, what are you doing to the cemetery? What are you doing? And the ghoul goes, the ghoul goes, no, I am doing nothing. It is it. It is doing this. It is doing this. Well, what is it? Says Archibald as he kind of advances a little bit with his pistol drawn. Tell us. It has come and is killing my family. <laughs> and Archibald's like, ha, family, poof. And Felicity says, listen, I think he's scared. I think he's very afraid. The old, uh, they're more afraid of us than we are of them kind of thing. No, I think in this case, he's not afraid of us. I think he's afraid of whatever's underneath the cemetery. Yes, yes, it is horrible. It is, it is most horrible. Well, that does not sound good. Well, what is it? It came and it has killed my family and eaten my family and is is constantly expelling power. Power that shoots things from the ground up into the air. Gets it up from the ground. It has come to destroy us all. Oh, I don't happen to believe that at all. I think you're lying. Miss and uh, Felicity, she's gonna make another check for sure. It's like, no, no, he's telling the truth. He's terrified. That monster, that beast, is terrified. <laughs> yes, I am trying to escape from it. It has eaten and destroyed most of my family down in the tunnels below. If you're lying to us, creature, you shall pay with your worthless life. No, no, do me a favor. Go into the tunnels underneath here and destroy it before it destroys us all. Now, may I go? I must slink off into the darkness. I must hide, for it is going to kill us all. I don't know. What do you think, Professor? I don't know. Letting such a foul beast... No, we only eat the dead. Not the living. Only if you get in our way. Please, please let me go. So he's backing up slowly. And, um, and Felicity's like, I say, I think we have worse things to worry about than this poor creature. Yeah, I don't like it much. If I had my way, I'd put this gun to its head and fire. Yes, please don't. Please, I think I'm the last of my kind in this area. This area? Yeah, I bet. I think I am the last of my kind. Please let me go. And he's been slowly inching away up close to these sarcophagi. And um, Professor's like, all right, let him go. I don't think he is the source of everything that's going on here. And Felicity's like, I'm telling you, he is not. He is afraid of something greater. And the ghoul slinks away into the woods that surround the cemetery. So there's a hole right here where the ghoul came up. Well, I think we need to go and investigate what is down there. Yes, I'm afraid so. We have our weapons. We have what we need. I say we go now. I agree, Archibald. You lead the way. Good. I have my flashlight. So um, the pit itself is a bit of a drop. So he is going to hang and drop. Um... But it's far enough. I, it's far enough that he could hurt himself if he doesn't land right. But it's not so bad that you know. So he's going to make a save test. Well, it'll just be a test. He'll make a test as he drops, and he makes it. He he makes it there without mishap, and he flashes a flashlight around the tunnel. He doesn't see anything immediately. He goes, coast is clear, Professor. So Doctor Phineas is going to hang and drop. And he makes it down with no problem. And then uh, Clark Chandler is going to make uh, ladies first. So Felicity goes. 
and he holds her arms and he lays flat by the hole and he lowers her down and uh, Dr. Abercrombie um, helps her down and then they all move out of the way and Clark drops down and he makes it. So they all make it without a mishap. They make it down to the, uh, the tunnels. So switch up venues here. Alright, I don't really have uh, I don't really have any really good tunnel tiles. I had a few, and I swear I had more, but I wasn't able to find them. So I'm just gonna basically use my dungeon tiles, and hopefully you all can use your imagination to see them as as actual tunnel pieces. Alright, so they uh they drop down into this hallway, into a tunnel. These are, these are like tunnels that are carved into the ground. And then this is the tunnel hole that they fell down. So. And these tunnels are not exactly straight or anything. It's just, uh, you know, use your imagination. <laughs> so they are down in the tunnels. And they are making their way, looks like that, it's on camera. And the tunnel curves to the right. So that creature lived down here, did he? Well, let's go see what we can find. So they make their way, and so, well, Clark's like, let me sneak down here and see what I can see. So he goes down, peeks around the corner. He's going to make his stealth test. And he makes it. He seems to move very quietly. He looks around. And the tunnel basically kind of curves around to the right, basically. And coast is clear. So they all come up. And they make their way down the tunnel. Now... Um, down this tunnel, Chandler looks down and it's going to turn to the right here. And in the hall, it's littered with four dead ghoul corpses. Oh. So as soon as he sees it, they have to make a corruption test. The carnage is horrific. So uh, it's uh, Clark and Sneed. All right, so Clark makes it. Sneed does not, but spends another corruption point as to not be rattled. All right, and then um, the other two come around, and Chandler's like, "No, don't, don't, Felicity, don't look. Too late. I am not some delicate." Oh. And she uh, turns and pukes in the corner. <laughs> so she's going to make a test. Oh, no, it really affects her. So she is going to, she takes a, uh, she spends a corruption point. Oh, what horror. We have to walk down there? We need to find out what is causing the ghouls, slaughtering these ghouls. That's got to be horrific and terrible. Yes. All right, very well. Sneed's like, I'll go first. So he goes down the hall, followed by Clark, Felicity with Dr. Abercrombie bringing up the rear. Abercrombie has to make a test as well, I forgot. Uh, he, and he is able to hold it together. So uh, they come around the corner, and um, they come upon in the middle of this hall is the remnants of what looks like an egg. A big egg. What is that? And it is hatched. But drawn on it are eldritch symbols. Abercrombie's like, what? This. It looks, it does. It looks like an egg. Let me see. And so he takes a look at the eldritch um, writings on it. Since he's educated, 
and also has an eidetic memory. He's going to make a test with advantage. Those have been painted on there with some kind of blood and these symbols. I think I may have seen something like them in a book once before. They are like symbols of awakening. So this egg must have been down here for God's know how long. God knows how long. But now somebody has done something to make it hatch. What could have done such a thing? I don't know. Let me look. So Felicity comes up. She looks as well. She goes, ah, I think, huh, I too have seen those symbols before. Yes. Here's the problem. Whatever hatched out of that egg, that must be what is killing these creatures. But what would bring forth such a horrible monstrosity? I don't know. And uh, I guess I should all make a test against corruption because this egg is otherworldly and horrific. Oh, okay. So Clark makes his, the doctor makes his, uh, Sneed makes his, and Felicity makes hers. So not so rattled, I guess. So that's good. And they don't have to spend any more corruption points. Well, whatever it is, Sneed says, we have to find it and stop it. Even when I come back from war, it appears as if I'm constantly fighting a war, but this time for the soul of humanity. Yes, very dramatic, Sneed, but well-spoken, well-said. This place gives me the creeps, says Clark. Yes, well, let us continue. So they inch their way past the egg down the hallways, and this hallway turns this direction. And um, Sneed and, and Clark are leading. And then um, as they come around the corner, it opens up into a room. And they stop. And in that room is a... Uh, oh. Is a terror beyond imagining. <laughs> And they're all going to have to make a corruption test. I thought I had the miniature out, but apparently I grabbed the wrong miniature. So just a moment, folks. Intermission. No, just kidding. Don't go anywhere. Uh, so they see it, and the horror in their faces practically drives them insane. I guess we'll find out if it does or not once they make their test. As soon as I find the miniature I had in mind... Um, for this. There it is. All right, cool. So they are looking at this horrific creature that they assume has hatched out of the egg and uh, is there to uh, and sitting in the middle of the room is this, this creature, snake-like creature, almost like the face of a human. And, it, and as they turn the corner it hisses at them and uh it says it's like a whispering voice they all see it they all have to make a test or lose a point of corruption or be rattled and all of them but sneed makes the test so sneed spends one of his precious corruption points and he's in trouble when it comes to corruption. And this creature sees them and opens its mouth. And that's where we're going to end this episode. <laughs> what is this thing? What is going to happen with it? Are there more? Let's find out in the next episode. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that little tiny Cthulhu story. And until next time, keep on rolling dice and playing games. Magehammer out.